<laughs> Snatch game this season was kind of like a, you're f***ed if you do or you're f***ed if you don't. Can I say f***ed? I'm mm -hmm. saying it. I just wanted to go on to uh, manipulate my edit and yell at people. <laughs> 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 you know, this I, as an English person, this is how I speak. So being around Trinity, he was like, girl, I live. Oh my God, I need some rhinestones. I just want to tell y'all, I'm so grateful for y'all. Y'all are some raggedy ass bitches, but y'all are also some bad ass bitches. <laughs> Hello everyone, I am Joey Nolfi, EW's RuPaul's Drag Race reporter and loyal subject to the royal courts we've gathered today for Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table. I am thrilled, honored, and gagged to be sitting here with a cast that has never been attempted before, the debut competition featuring all of the first eliminated queens in Drag Race history. <laughs> so, hello, crownless queens, how are we doing today? Hi. Are you shady, messy queen? <laughs> For real, there is no mistaking the excellence that's really here for the first ever all winner season of RuPaul's Drag Race. So, enjoying our winner winner chicken dinner, please welcome season three winner Raja, season five winner Jinx Monsoon, <laughs> All Stars four winner Monet Exchange, All Stars four winner Trinity the Tuck, UK season one winner, The Vivian. Season 12 winner, Jada Essence Hall. All Stars five winner, Shea Coulee. And unfortunately, Evie oddly could not be here today, but we do send our best to her. So thank you everybody for being here. We are finally here after years of people begging you in the comments and you all have such big careers. So there really is a lot at stake here. So did anyone go back and forth on whether they wanted to join and what ultimately made coming back to all of this delightful chaos worth it for all of you? I still haven't made up my mind. I'm still <laughs> weighing my options. <laughs> there was no question for me. I mean, there was no prize money in England. So I was like, how am I, even if I come away with 10 pounds, I'm better off, do you know what I mean? How do you feel that the, the, um, the Lady Camden is the first UK queen to win money on Drag Race? I'm wow. furious. <laughs> I'm furious. No, I was absolutely nervous to go back because you're like, I don't want to tarnish my reputation. I won the crown. Too late. <laughs> you want to come back and do it. But then you get back into it and you're like, this show is crazy, it's chaotic, but it is fun. Yeah. I jumped at the chance because I just wanted people to remember me. <laughs> Wait, who are you? Again. She's um, still alive. Who are you? <laughs> I, you? You know, honestly, I thought I definitely weighed the option of going because I was like, I didn't really have a lot of time to like get more confident and like travel and like really be confident as a winner. And so I was like, but you know what? Bitch, this is a second shot. Go and get it, mama. Because I think too, being a pandemic winner mm -hmm. is a very different experience. And I think it's so bomb that, you know, you got to come back and show Jada 2.0. Period. I definitely changed my mind, because after the edit of uh, mine and Monet's win, where it looked like it was on Facetune, um, I was like, I don't know about this, but here I am. I was just excited. <laughs> <laughs> I was excited to show what I've done with my drag in the last, like, 10 or so years. Decade. I'll say decade. 20 years. More. Yeah. 20, 20 years. Goal. Yes. <laughs> Leave that part in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is, that's cute and all, but I mean, the real reason that we are all gathered here today is just to get Monet in the same room as an actual British person so that you can make your case about the true British accent and its evolution to Vivian's face. So please just hash it out. I would love to see it. Okay, uh -huh. so like I said on season 10, we had the voice first. It, we was all copacetic. Then y'all try to move and be cute, and then y'all change it up. Ooh. And that's what happened. Yes so or no? Give me your British accent. This is the British accent. This is how they spoke in the 1740s. Well, you did, no. <laughs> Just before we started filming, you were like, Vivian, listen to my British accent. Ma, ma, ma. So can we please, can we please okay. hear your British accent? Was that, was that Monet Exchange or Barney? Which one? Because, uh, <laughs> Barney. The visual of Barney. The gag is Monet Exchange is Barney. Yeah. Oh. Reveal yourself. They both have green toes. <laughs> <laughs> we could, we could. Clearly could go on about this all day, but in all seriousness, I mean, legacy is really important. And I want to know if it was more important for you all to give fans what you think more of what they originally fell in love with on your seasons, or did you try to lean into giving them something that would surprise them and be bigger on all winter season? Coming back the second time and doing it all over again, you are a, a lot more yourself and a lot more relaxed. So I think even no matter which of us are up here, we've all shown an, another side of who we are. And I know at least, like, for me, it felt different 
being like a three-peat offender with, you know, Monet and Trinity. I feel like, you know, you go back on All Stars and you really want to right all the wrongs and, you know, really show people what you're worth. But I feel like coming back for a third time, it was really for me just like, I just want to have fun because I love drag race, you know? I just wanted to go on to uh, manipulate my edit and yell at people. <laughs> 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 Control the story, huh? <laughs> Collusion. And we also got the chance to introduce Viv to In-N-Out Burger. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And she lived. As you will see me get slightly wider throughout the season. <laughs> <laughs> to the work room like this. <laughs> and leave a bit more. <laughs> now for this next question, you cannot say yourself. You have to say someone else on the cast. Whose performance this season do you think will surprise fans the most and who slayed hardest on the runway? I gotta say, I wanna say first, I think Evie. I am so excited for the fans to see what Miss Evelyn oddly pulls out. Also her face. She oh. tried some new stuff for her face. And it was and awful. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding. And she would like, we would all get finished at the, at the, at the makeup mirrors and we, she would turn around. We would all be like, oh my God, you look yeah. stunning. Stunning. Can I say one more? I already had high expectations, but they were absolutely, Raja exceeded them so oh. much. Like just really, truly blue me away and like not to kiss her ass either but Raja was the first Rue girl that I really fell in love with on season three she's the OG fashion queen she really comes and proves why she is the OG fashion queen not only was she fierce competition but then also like super compassionate super understanding I call her my spiritual guru now I come to her for medical for medical oh, advice, I come to her for, for what, my, what my stars say to me. <laughs> I come to her about everything, and she always has the most brilliant advice for me. So, yeah, I love you. I'm also going to say Jada, because Jada had, like, a revolving door. Like, she got off of one season and had to get right back on another. So I feel like we had the least amount of time to get to know Jada since her last season. Um, and she really, you know, delivered. I've looked up to Trinity for absolutely years as she is a drag queen's drag queen. The runways, we know they're going to come. But when you see them, I mean mind-blowing, but even in challenges, like, just watching you pull stuff out that you, I don't think you even knew you had. Thank you. It was amazing to watch. She hates it when we talk nice about her. Yeah. You're gonna ruin can, my like, Reddit reputation. I can hear her butthole <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about my lips or my butthole? <laughs> I mean, clearly, yes, you all did excellent. I mean, look at the material we have here. You all look wonderful today. But given how big this season's talent is, it makes sense that there are changes to the way that the game is played. So without spoiling, um, when you heard what the alterations were, can you describe what your immediate reaction was? <laughs> I hated it. I wanted it to not be how it was at the beginning. And then, it's, then we were, got into the game, and I was like, oh, I do like it. She's hot and she's cold. I loved it so much because I feel like it gives the fans of the show a, an opportunity that they've never, ever, ever seen in Drag Race history. Ever. I liked it and I think it's the reason I said yes. My first reaction was, wow, what a great idea. But then knowing that it's RuPaul's Drag Race, I was like, but what's the catch? <laughs> and then when we got there, that's when we found out the catch. So Everybody did so phenomenal. The twist is what's gonna keep the fans on their toes, mm -hmm. for sure. There are many iconic snatches here, some that landed in the bottom, um, but how much pressure was there for prep on Snatch Game this time around, both for those who did well originally and those who didn't do well originally? Uh, it's hard. You go back to another season as a winner of Snatch Game, and I think Michelle Visage, a comment on my season was it was the best Snatch Game she'd ever seen. So I was just like, well, I'm going to do this and hope for the best because I don't. I didn't feel like I could live up to it. You know, the pressure of going from another country to then. You can be great at Snatch Game, but as soon as RuPaul walks in that room, it's a completely different scenario. You know, you can be as, so prepared, but then it goes poof and then you're down to your quick wit and, and whatever you pull out your <laughs> to yeah. me, To me, it was more like the pressure of doing Snatch Game with winners. Like, because yeah. here it was like everybody was strong and so you have to be 
super specific and super good at what you're doing if you want to do well. I mean, I, I was nervous. I was literally going against five winners. Jinx won hers. Trudine won hers. Shay won hers. Vivian won hers. Roger, did you win yours? No. But you were really good. And Sorry, I was, was excellent. An excellent safe. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like some really, I was like, all these people are so good at Snatch Game. And here come old Whitney Houston girl trying to get, trying to give it up. <laughs> Snatch Game this season was kind of like a, you're f***ed if you do or you're if you don't, can I say I'm saying it. Um, because either you feel like you have to like erase the, your, your, your previous performance or you have to outdo it. We all just had to pick people we were really excited to play, right? Like yeah. good or bad, we all had a lot of fun that day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were insane. Definitely have to do a double take this match game. For sure. <laughs> Raja. Um, you are also competing against some of your victims here on Fashion Photo Review. <laughs> so, did any of these ladies have feedback for you when you first uh, came together for All Winners? I mean, I was a little terrified walking in. <laughs> I'm, you know, I was expecting huge, huge attitudes and um, maybe spiteful, daggery, uh, maybe a bludgeon, or I, I don't know. I didn't. I was. I was a little scared. It's not too late. <laughs> but, you know, Trinity has the knife. Yeah, 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 totally. I really just came in being like, Raja, my name's not Sean. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, just so you, you know. Well, Raja, to keep the spirit alive, can we toot and boot the looks on the, on the table here right now? Let's keep it easy. Boot, all of you. <laughs> I feel like the bar was so low for me, I had nowhere to go but. <laughs> we agree. Shay, I mean, how did the All Stars 5 drama um, around the alleged campaign change the way you navigated your sisters in a competitive um, environment? My style as a competitor is really to just focus on trying to be my best self and not worry about what other people are doing. And if girls wanted to do a campaign to try and send me home this time, I knew that the fans would do their due diligence and tear their asses apart. So I slept well at night. <laughs> um, what, what is the drama like this season? The egos are huge. <laughs> the, the drama was more of like, we are business women and we are in control more of like what we want. So it was more of like getting these people behind the cameras together. Yeah, I think honestly the biggest drama was us being like, where's my phone? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was like eight internal battles all happening in the same room at the same time. And that's just her personality. <laughs> 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 I will say, this being my third time back into Drag Race, I was like, you know what? I'm just ready to have fun yeah. and be strategy. Because I will say, as someone who wa who's watches a lot of Drag Race, all the franchises, and All Stars, I'm like, watching it, I'm like, I want them to be shady and send powerful people home. Q, UK versus the world. I love <laughs> that they were being yeah. so shady and made such good TV. So I wanted to, I, I felt that energy. I'm like, let's create chaos, let's have fun. So what is your interviews going to be like? <laughs> your confessionals. <laughs> Monet's going to be like, that ugly <laughs> Monet and I are friends. <laughs> Monet, Jada, Shay, and I mean Evie, who is not here. I mean, many have described this group as part of what is referred to as the Melanin Dynasty. I mean, including five black queens to win consecutively from Monet through to Simone. What weight does that hold for you, not only as queens in this franchise, but also just as as human beings? Um, for me, I don't feel like there's a weight to it. I just feel like in order for us, especially for us to impact people who look like us, it is important for us to be our most authentic selves. I know for a fact that just being ourselves, we have made a lot of change in, in the lives of other people, and I hope that we can continue to do so. I love being my whole black self on yeah. TV. And now, since even since All Stars 4, there's just so much more access. Working with people like Edward Scissorhands, who, who can give me hairstyles and rock yeah. and, and adorn and look the way I want to on TV. So going back for this All Winter season, I felt so good, and I feel even more so empowered walking down the runway and projecting what I want people to see um, for me and my little big old black booty. Like I had said on All Stars <laughs> 5 that my drag in its purest form is a love letter to black women. Mm. I really felt like coming back and doing this all winter season for me was an opportunity to just continue writing that letter. Yeah. Now Monet and Trinity, I mean fans are going to be asking if you are both doing this to settle the tie win once and for all, did that factor into your decision to do this, or did you actually feel compelled to maybe join forces in an alliance because of the tie? Uh, 
Go ahead, answer it. <laughs> I don't think there's anything to settle because this is, there's two different competitions. There's All Stars 4, which was, that was that. We, we completed that. And this is a whole new venture, whole different rules, two different entertainers that have evolved since All Stars. I don't think there's anything to settle. It's just something different. The rules are different. The way we compete is different. I'm so proud of myself and I'm so proud of my twinner for what she was able to do this season as well. I mean, I'm just excited to, to watch as a fan. Yeah, there's nothing to settle, girl. We both got our own money, our own crown, our own scepter. This for the house. I bought some Gucci bags. Like, like people just, you do, you got your money, you did your thing, and we, there's no animosity, there's no, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna settle the score with you, Trinity. Like, it's not, it's nothing, none of that. Now, Jada, you, you said before that you didn't always feel like fans necessarily held your victory in the same regard as other winners. So what do you mean by that? And did a spot on this cast make you feel differently about how much you are valued? After winning my season, there was a lot of, um, a lot of the fans who were upset that I had won the show. It did feel a little weird for me, but I think coming in the room with, with these girls, oh, and I don't wanna get emotional because you know I'm a cry baby, um, but every single one of them in that workroom made me feel like a star. Everybody was, we were all so supportive of each other and to me that, it made me feel like a winner just to see people that I've always admired in the work that they've always done show me so much respect. I mean, you could be a hardworking you can be sickening, but you can also have like heart and be a nice person. You are a star. Thank yeah. you. You are a Thank star. You. Oh, for sure. Thank you. She's Aww. a supernova. <laughs> I mean, Jada, you had a hometown parade. Literally. Okay. This, and you, you know what the thing about that parade was? It was so weird because at home, like not necessarily always have I felt like I had the most support from home, but to see like everybody come out, especially during the pandemic and be like, regardless of if we have to sit in our cars and ride past and show you support for what you've done, we're going to make sure you know that we are proud of what you've done. And so it felt good. And like I said, again, being in the workroom with these girls, they, not that they were like, yeah, you're a winner like us. It was like, we're proud of you for being a winner. And I felt like we've each felt that for every single person that was in the room. I just want to tell y'all, I'm so grateful for y'all. Y'all are some raggedy ass bitches. <laughs> But y'all are also some badass <laughs> You know what I mean? And I love y'all so much, seriously. We love you, Thank Jada. You. Jada. Thank you. I know you do wear the crown of um, trade of season 12 proudly, so I want to know from this whole cast, who is the trade of this season? Is it still Jada or is it someone else? It's Jinx. Evie. <laughs> Evie. Oh, Evie's always Evie. been the trade, honey. Evie's yeah, always been the trade. That's because smashing. this whole table are a whole bunch of dip <laughs> After Evie walks around the workroom all the time naked, I'm down. Yeah. Um, she is, she is, she is the trade. The thing is, is what they say about Evie is absolutely true. <laughs> absolutely true. I said. Oh. <laughs> Raja and Jinx, I do want to ask you a little bit about because your seasons were earlier. So um, what are coming you back, to say? I know shocker, right? Um, oh, how much did re-entering the competition? How much did the competition change from seasons three and five? So it's hard to compare the two, but going back into the realm of competition and the way that Drag Race has grown and the fan base has grown and the way people pay attention to Drag Race now versus how it was back then, I felt like I had a lot to live up to. And I felt like I had a lot to like um, bone up on uh, with some of the girls who have competed two or three times, some of the girls who were just doing it. I felt like I really had to, um, you know, uh, get the rust off and shake it out. <laughs> well, season three was, you know, it was in, Drag Race itself was in such primitive stages. Like, it, it, in my particular season, it was more about creating things. We were constantly doing these balls where we had to sew, glue, constant, constant, every challenge. And this time, I actually got to have fun and shine a little bit with the acting challenges and the writing and the comedy and dancing. things that I, and dancing. I did some dancing, you know, and, dra and Drag Race, Drag Race now, Drag Race, has, Drag Race has created a culture and now an industry, you know, whereas when I was on it, no one had a fucking lace front, you know? <laughs> so it was, it's a very, very different world. I was but excited to But they haven't been invented yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, George Washington had him a little lace front. George Washington had a lace front. 
We didn't have George Washington's frontal was melted. <laughs> 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 And it's still part of that installment was precise. Yes. Girl, yeah. <laughs> they gotta lace them no. back. <laughs> Given everyone's reaction to when Raja said she was dancing, what what does everybody think of Raja's dancing? Uh, <laughs> I love Raja's dancing. I she think, stopping. I think she's stopping. It is unique. Not afraid to reference very, or not reference. Very interesting and uh, very herself. It is interpretive. <laughs> interpretive. <laughs> You're gonna have to interpret it. I think a lot of fans out there will identify with Raja's dancing. <clears throat> so I want to know a little bit um, from you, Shay, about having Naomi Campbell as a runway coach. Um, I know that moment was really meaningful for you, so can you tell me what that was like to have Naomi critiquing your runway walk and what it me meant for you, what she said after? I, like, I'm like trembling right now just think because because for first of all, see, look, I'm, I'm like stuttering. <laughs> there are very few people that I get starstruck around because, you know, it's just like people are people. But Naomi Campbell is a goddess. Okay. And I, I, I have looked up to <laughs> Naomi since I was like four years old. I remember seeing her in Michael Jackson's Out of the Closet video and being like, wow, who is this powerful, beautiful, statuesque black woman with this cascading locks? Whatever she is, I want to be her. And to have her sit there and first of all, just see me walk and say that she would give no notes on my... <laughs> See, like, I'm, it's so stupid, I'm so, but like to hear those words from someone like Naomi Campbell, mm. I, that is honestly one of the most affirming moments I've ever had in my life. And I'm just so grateful that I got to have that opportunity. Did anyone actually like take the things that she said and like actually incorporate incorporate them into their runway walks going forward? Absolutely not, she seemed ill-informed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes I did. She said she loved my runway walk, so I just continued Exactly. Yeah. doing it, yeah. yeah. I was, okay, this is a thing. I may or may not have had critiques, but I was very busy looking at her beautiful hair and face <laughs> and shining beautiful skin. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know. She, I'll tell you this. She was looking delicious. Mm. Oh, she Divine. looked stunning. Well, I was gagged at the, I guess you, you've, you've heard of models making their own wind. When she was doing her runway walk, she was making her own win, and that yes. virgin baby Remy hair, honey, was just, <laughs> she, <laughs> it oh was my God. insane. Like, it you, was like a, yeah. you feel that impact when she walked, because, like, she's creating that win, but it's almost like a cross breeze, because I felt like I was being blown away at the same time, too. It was just and then, so And then the cool. hair was so perfect, she would, like, touch her face, and it would go, Whoosh. She would sneeze, and it went, <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. She had beautiful hair. goddess. Each strand was like one of those things at, at, at the car wash. She was Wacky just like... Wacky waving and two man. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was insane. Nope. Cameron Diaz unretired herself for Drag Race. So what was that like having her on set? <gasps> she looked beautiful. Yeah. So up close and untucked. Like, I was like... And she seemed like a fan of the show. Like, yeah. some judges that come on don't seem to be present. But she was like very knowledgeable. She knew who we were. She knew, she knew what to look for. She was there and she looked stunning. And she was super nice. Mm -hmm. so I loved it. I was glad to see her there because when we were doing season 12 and it was approaching the finale, her and Leslie Jones were both like on a live and they were just talking and Leslie said, well girl, at the end of the day, who are like, who do you think is gonna win? And she said, no question, Jada. <laughs> look at her and I'm like, yes. gag. And then she showed up and like, even from that moment, I could tell how invested she was in the show. So to know that she was there, I'm like, oh, we have a judge who's not, she's not gonna be giving fluff and just saying things like, she is invested and she know like like Trinity said, she had had known every single one of us. She had known our journey, our personal struggles with the show and every single thing. So it was so good to like have a judge that was not like not just to be like a guest judge, like, oh, we would love to see her, but to see somebody that's there that was like so heavily invested and to also want to see us be successful that when she gave us advice, I just wanted to take it all in and like apply it to myself. Yeah. There's Beautiful. something about Cameron. <laughs> oh, Damn. You see, because she was in a movie Sorry. called There's Something About Mary. You Jinx see. explains it all. Yeah. Yes, you are just explaining Thank it. Thank you, Jinx. Very funny. Yeah. Vivian, you are this season's only international winner. 
um, from a from an international franchise. I, I know we've spoken a lot before about the differences in American and British drag, but was it different competing amongst a bunch of American queens? Oh my God, it was the most nerve wracking thing. I mean, just getting on a plane, coming all this way, walking into that workroom with the biggest drag personalities possibly on the planet. I mean, it took me a few weeks to really find my stride because, you know, this, I, as an English person, this is how I speak. So being around Trinity, he was like, girl, I live. Oh my God, I need some rhinestones. It's like, wow, I've got to compete with, you know, because yes, it's a huge drag competition, but we're making TV as well. So, you know, I was just kind of getting in my, my you know, get, I was getting my little face on and make, and there's all this. And so finding the balance of like, not trying to scream and get my time, but just have a ball. And then I realized, it took me to like week three, I was like, oh my God, they're just rotted, horrible drag queens, <laughs> just like me. With and a different then, accent. With a different <laughs> accent. So you should I go live. Right home. So I did, it did feel right. And yeah. honestly, God, like, you know, did we all see eye to eye all the way through the season? No, it's Drag Race. Did we all leave as an amazing family? Absolutely. I can ring any one of these girls on any time of the day. You know, I've been, been to see Jinx the minute she was in the, in the UK. I was there cheering her on, thinking, what can I take her? What British snacks hasn't she eaten yet? Turns out none. Um, <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> but it's, I mean, I just absolutely love that. And it's been the best experience. <laughs> I told you not to call my husband a British snack. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we get it. Drinks, Jinx is married. We know. We can't forget no, it. You had it, first, you had it right the first time. Drink, drink, drink is married. I thought it was going to happen. Let me have this. <laughs> Celebrate drink me. Drink food. Oh, <laughs> Vivian, what was the, I mean, you know, American conservatives are a, an interesting group online, to say the least. So uh, did what was the reaction like to your Donald Trump snatch game from American oh. conservatives online? I could, I've got the worst memory in dates. I can't remember. Trump was president by the time I'd done yes, it. Yes, he was. Yeah, but it was like, I don't think the people who had voted for him realised what they'd done. But I think by the time Snatch Game came out, they kind of had. So I think they were on my side. <laughs> because it was like, do I go in? Uh, you know, Snatch Game is all about making Rue laugh. You know, Donald Trump was the most famous person on the planet at that time. So I was like, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And there was, I think people saw that I was taking the piss out of him and making him look even more foolish than he was making himself look. So which I, is hard. Which is very hard, <laughs> but it was great. It was fantastic. That <laughs> was hard watching you do it. Now, I, to, to the group, I want to ask, you know, as the most glistening royals in this queendom of all the queens from the franchises around the world, which Rue girl do you think best represents the future or the next generation of where drag is heading? Ooh. Oh, wow. I, I think... I, there's no right or wrong answer, because if you look at this panel, drag is literally anything and everything. And you can't say going forward, drag is going to be this because drag will always be so many different things. And so I don't think there's a, a right answer for that. I think that every girl that is added to the franchise brings something different. The great thing about the show as well is, you know, you can get given a brief of a runway and then you think you've caught like the most crazy thing or you think, every and then you, you line up to walk the runway and go, oh my God, you crazy how do yes. you even think of that? Yeah. And then you've got Evie over there doing whatever the f that is, but it's the most fashionable thing you've ever seen. You know, it, it's like everyone has such a unique, there's no right or wrong way to do drag, whoever you are. You know, I, it, as long as you're expressing yourself and you walk out that door and you're amazing, but just do it well. I've noticed even in my own drag that things have changed just by watching the show and like the way that we do it. And like, like she said, it's gonna be a melting pot of, you have trans people who have been a part of drag forever, but now the world is realizing that you have so many different people that are doing drag now. And if you're not used to that, then baby, you better get used to it and get with it. Cause that's what it's gonna be. And there's so many different types of drag that hasn't been on the show yet. Yeah. Like bearded, even more obscure club kids. There's so many different types of drag. I encourage people, if you are a fan of drag race, become a fan of drag and do your research and support local entertainers. Drag is an art form and art has to be able to evolve and adapt and reflect the community that it's serving. And I think, you know, we see a direct cause and effect between 
the LGBTQ plus community and what's important to us as a community, it immediately gets reflected in drag. Drag is unique to the queer experience, whether you're queer or you're an ally or you're queer adjacent, like I say for some people. <laughs> in, in, in all seriousness, Drag Race, and Drag Race has opened my eyes to so many different drag that I did not know were out there that were as so accessible. And drag is, really is like the queer Super Bowl. We love, <laughs> we love consuming it. People complain about their too many seasons and we watch each and every one of them because <laughs> drag is this explosion. It's we are all, time. we're all so lucky to live in this time where drag is being celebrated the, the way that it is. And the, uh, my hope, and I'm sure everyone else is that going forward that it, it gets even bigger, that drag queens are performing at the Grammys. Drag, drag queens are winning Oscars. Like I, I see that for drag and I know that we can all do it and, ha and I'm happy to be a part of, of a legacy that can make that happen. To close this out though, I would like to, you know, All Stars, always does open with a reading challenge. So I thought we would close the interview by opening the library again. Can we just get some loving reads going? Monet, you are gutted. <laughs> Trinity, you look so beautiful today that I hardly recognize you. It's because I didn't do my own makeup. Cut it. Viv, can I do my impression? Do you, yeah, do your impression. This is Viv. Girls, I have to poo. Girls, I don't think I got it all. I'm gonna have to poo again. <laughs> That's gonna be my legacy of this season, just no. pooing. <laughs> pooing at any opportunity. Okay, I'll do it's my impression of you. It's because you're the shit. Okay. Get it? Oh, uh, I just think I misunderstood the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> My only read is, um, can the camera do a really zoom up on Jinx? A zoom up? Yeah. What about? That. Oh, that's your read. Oh, I get it. Very clever. <laughs> Trinity made a joke, everyone. Yay, Trinity! Yay, me! Yay! The way that, the way that you kind of cannot read Jinx because she's like, <laughs> oh, she she will always get the Take last the air word right out of the re you read her. She and she's will like, oh, you think that's funny? You <laughs> bitch. She said, oh, so you think you're really funny, bitch? Oh. <laughs> so I, I actually can I ask a question, Joey? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Where the f is the chicken? I thought we were supposed to be eating dinner. Yeah. yeah. And I'm I mean, we can try to eat these. Here you go, Shay. Here you go. There you go. Just put these eat little statues on your plate. Yeah. Winner, winner. Mine you're is, in a I corset. Think, I think mine is overdone. In a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit overdone. Just a little dry. Play. The chicken has flown the coop on this interview. This has been Entertainment <laughs> Weekly's. Yeah, explain that one, Jinx. Yes. <laughs> this this has been Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table. Thank you to these queens, who you can catch soon on Paramount Plus. Thank you everybody for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.